You do not have to be polite to a white nationalist. Hey, my people. I'm back for part two of this. Please go watch part one, because I don't want to recap, because it's going to take up too much time. But I believe this message is important. The entire message. Please watch all the parts. So in the last video, we left off about how I had went to a meeting with Martin Luther King's family about an event that we were having. I got home, and someone was in my apartment. So this was pre-cell phones. I didn't even, the concept wasn't even there. So I get in my car. I drive the several blocks. I find a payphone. I call 911. I get help. By the time we got back to the apartment and the police were there, the people were gone. What we found was N Lover spray painted over everything in my apartment. The walls, the ceiling, the carpet. They had taken a knife and sliced up my bed. Broke every dish in my apartment, busted up my TV, sliced up all of my furniture. The police told me it was a good thing that I noticed because I probably would have died if I went into the apartment that night. As there was a noose hanging off the balcony. So until I could move, I'd have police come in every time I wanted to go in and out of my house. I lost jobs because my employers were getting phone calls and letters, death threats. I was getting death threats. I ended up having to move home with my parents for safety reasons that was in a town about 45 minutes away. After being at my parents' house for two weeks, my father came to me and told me that he loved me dearly. But I had a choice to make. I could either be an activist and do the things that I believed were right and move away, or I could live at home. Because now my parents were getting followed, harassed, death threats. I told my parents I completely understood and I moved away. And I stopped going to see my parents until the threats on them quit. Several years later, I had met my ex-wife. We were together for 20 years, legally married. When her and I got together, we started having some significant issues because of other people. She was actually purchasing her home on a private contract from a gentleman. He had actually seen me at the house at one point in time when he stopped by for something. And about three months later, he saw me on the news. With our governor at the time, talking about gay rights. He called yelling and screaming and told her that he was going to cancel her contract for the house. We contacted a lawyer and found out that no, he couldn't do this. He would break into the house when we weren't home, take stuff out of it, move stuff around, turn off our heat, turn off our water, and then somebody else who found out about who we were and what we were doing, started calling the house, threatening us. They even broke into the garage, spray-painted lesbian, yeah, didn't spell it right, all over the garage, all over our cars, they tore shit up. To the point when they broke into the house, they cut all the electrical cords and then plugged the electronics back in, hoping that when things didn't work, we would just reach our hand back and see if it was plugged in correctly and get electrocuted. That's not even the worst of it. There's going to be a part three. Please watch all of these parts. The message is important because you're going to want to hear what I have to say at the end because her perspective on this is wrong and it comes from a place of privilege. The other side needs to be heard.